Monsteras are unlike most plants. Most of you will probably know that when you cut the stem of a plant, it normally produces multiple stems in its place. It's a neat little trick to get super bushy plants like jades, pothos and philodendron that you can show off to all your friends and family. Just look at my philodendron melanocrisis. I hard pruned it a few weeks ago and now it's got more stems than it knows what to do with. Pretty neat, eh? And by the way, I know it's not melanocrisis. That's just me poking fun at him for how fussy he is. If you know, you know. Anyway, back to monsteras. Monsteras do not respond in the same way as my melanocrisis here. Nope, no chance. Sorry to break it to you, but it just won't produce three or four new stems from where you make a cut. It'll just replace like with like. In fact, you're more likely just hurting your plant. Yes, if you have a lovely long stem with big, beautiful fenestrated leaves and lop it off lower down, not only will you only get one stem growing in its place, defeating the purpose of the prune in the first place, but that new growth will most likely revert back to a youngling. Yes, no highly prized fenestrations for you. Well, not for the first couple of leaves anyway. Those new leaves will resemble the original unlobed leaves with no fenestrations from when it was a wee baba. And this is particularly true if you cut the stem back to where there are leaves with no fenestrations. You are basically cutting away the adult growth, turning the clock back for him and making him all juvenile. It's like big in reverse or going back to the future. Right. This is the thing with monsteras, there are two stages of their lives. The youngling stage where it's growing small non-fenestrated leaves furiously because it can't wait to become an adult and have its first drink and then when it's an adult it tends to chill out a bit more and takes its time producing big fenestrated leaves. So cutting it back takes it back in time. If only we could all turn back time like this eh? Let me take you back to when I was a newbie plant parent. Yes, hard to believe I know, but I really was the newbiest of noobs. If you're new here, that's noobs and not boobs. A trendy millennial word for newbie. I know, it doesn't suit me, does it? Back to the problem at hand. This monstera in my bedroom was actually one of my first plants, so it's a good 10 or so years old at this point. Blimey, he's nearly a teenager. And it will probably tell you all about the abuse it has received from me over the years as I was learning about what it wants through trial and error. There was no Sheffield May plants back then, you see. Hang on, hang on, that's you, you idiot. Yeah, well, I just mean plant tube wasn't as big back then. I had to rely on my own intuition, which is why it was such a mess. Anyway, I loved the plant and desperately wanted it to become bushier so I could get more and more of those big, beautiful leaves that we all go crazy for. So it looked like I knew what I was doing. What did I do? I pruned back a couple of the stems. And what happened? Only one stem grew back in their place. How did I take it? Furiously, and I'm not proud of what I said to him at the time, particularly when I realized it really wasn't his fault. We're still taking counseling sessions now, you know? I often think back and wonder just how big my plant would be if I just left it alone. Never mind, no point dwelling on the past, I suppose. And in any case, I got some free extra plants out of it, so all is not lost. So what do you do if you want a super bushy monstera, I hear you wail? Well, my plant friend, the only way to achieve this is to have lots of plants in the pot. More plants equal more stems. Pretty simple, eh? Just have a look at this guy. Looks super bushy, doesn't it? And to the untrained eye, it looks like it's all one big beautiful plant. On closer inspection, you'll see that there are actually three or four monsteras in the same pot. It's pretty good value actually, but this isn't something I recommend, mind you. In fact, I'd advise you not to do it. If there's one thing you've probably noticed about your plant, it's that the roots on this bad boy are hella thick. So chuck in three or four monsteras into the same pot and things will get pretty crowded down there pretty quickly. My big bedroom monstera is actually multiple plants. It looks like one plant from a distance to the untrained eye, but it's not. It's why I've got such a big pot for it. The roots kept getting too crowded, so I kept having to upsize the pot until eventually I said enough is enough and stuck the whole thing in this giant orange one. We'll come back to why this pot isn't such a great idea for him in a jiffy. If you've got a monstera like this then, I'd consider dividing it into individual plants and potting them on, much more likely to thrive. 
Now, all of this isn't to say you should never behead your Monstera. There are times when it might even be the best course of action. If you have one that is getting unruly and not growing how you want, then a chop and reset could be just the ticket, even if he says he doesn't want it. And I don't mean chop the stem off, chuck it in the bin and wait for new growth on the existing plant. No, I mean taking the chopped off part and starting again with it. And that means rooting it and starting again. But Mr. Sheffield, why on earth would you want to take years of hard work and chuck it all away in the blink of an eye? Just doesn't make sense. First, calm down and second, Check out my Monstera in my dining room. This is actually a wee cutting from the one in my bedroom and just look how it's growing. It's growing sideways as if it's desperate to escape the pot. Eventually it will leave its enclosure and start crawling along the floor. Not what I want and certainly not what Mrs. Shefford wants, let me tell you. Now, admittedly, this is all my fault. You see, I can admit my mistakes. I've not got him climbing up something, and I'll come back to why this is so important in a bit. So unless I want to have my floor taken over by this plant and my eardrums ringing from the missus, I'll probably have to reset it by chopping it off. And the main plant will actually be the piece that I cut off and not the existing plant. And the new leaf should come out fenestrated. This happens with top section cuttings. It doesn't revert to a juvenile state. But don't ask me why and I'm not going to lob the existing plant in the bin. That would be a waste. Sure, the new stem will probably come out small and boring, but over time, it will grow the way I want, provided I guide it by giving it something to climb up. Right, allow me to give you my hot take. In my humble opinion, it's much better sticking to one plant per pot and putting all your doting energy into that instead of worrying about having multiple stems. It can become a statement piece, particularly if you get it climbing up something, which you most definitely should. Don't provide a Zimmer frame to support him and he'll be spending all his time crawling on the floor, which isn't a clever look. They're climbers in their natural habitat, you see. They grow up along the trunks of nearby trees in order to reach the light at the canopy of the jungle. That's what those weird aerial roots are for, to grip onto the tree and hoist itself up. So try and mimic this in your home. Stick something into the soil and tie the stems to it. Doesn't have to be anything fancy. Lee, at Kill This Plant, uses bits of tree for his huge monstera and it seems to do a job perfectly. I've just conjured up this weird bamboo trellis system for my fella to grow on, and it's doing a job. It's not winning any housekeeping awards, of course, but I think it looks fine. The cool thing about it is that the plant will learn there is something there over time and start to grow itself onto it. You can kind of see this happening with the stems of my plant growing closer to the bamboo. Doing all this prevents disasters like stems breaking due to too much weight, but that is an extreme example and unlikely to happen. The main reason for doing this is to make your plant look better. I often do projects like staking my climbing plant up planks of wood on my Patreon page, so check it out if you're interested in a bonus video every week where I do things like this. Plus you get access to our exclusive planty Discord chat. What's not to love? When you've put the hard graft in and tied your Monstera onto something to climb up, you just want to leave it there. Choose a spot and leave it alone. Leave it! The perfect spot for this plant, in my opinion, is against the wall facing the light. This way you can leave the plant to grow all its leaves facing in one direction and its ugly backside will be facing the wall and not your living space. This is the cheat code for successful Monsteras. To not have the leaves twisting and turning in multiple directions from when you've been rotating them. I said leave it! Look at the surface of the soil of my plant. I mean, what on earth is that? Looks like it's going to metastasize and turn into something and attack me while I sleep. I think this actually appeared when I treated all my plants for fungus gnats by applying wiggly worms to the soil. Beneficial nematodes actually, and I'll leave a link to that video in the corner right now. It's how I finally won the war against those pesky fungus gnats and well worth a watch. But after this one, okay? Now, I don't think they are the nematodes or anything, but it does look to be some sort of mould, and I think it's because it's living in this giant pot without the fabled drainage holes. I always recommend drainage holes in my videos, but on this occasion, I didn't take my own advice. I went all rogue one and just plonked it into this. In my defence, I just couldn't find a plastic pot big enough to fit him in, and I thought, no big deal, 
I'd just be careful with the watering. And to be fair, up to this point, it's been working. He's been in there for a few years now and been a happy chappy in that time. But I guess something's going a bit Pete Tong now. And by the way, choosing the right pot for your plant is something I cover in my online houseplant course. Check it out in the description if you want to take your plant game to the next level. Now, I'd quite like to change his nappy, but um, how? Mrs. Sheffield really won't appreciate me making a mess in her bedroom, so I'd need to somehow get it down the stairs and into the garden. Yeah, something for a later date then. The point of this segment is to do as I say and not as I do. Keep your Monstera in a pot with drainage holes to avoid things like this happening, as well as other nasties like root rot and a gnat outbreak. If you want to go further down the rabbit hole with Monstera care, then check out the video on the screen now where I took a baby plant from the shop and set it up for success. And subscribe.